Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Kaiser Feist. I'd like to give a huge shout out to um, Eric over at Indiana Knives for helping me out um, with getting my hands on one of these. He has a really, really good price on these. They're $150. Everywhere else, they're um, $168 or so. So if you're wanting to get a little bit of a discount, go check out his place. Like I said, it's about 18 bucks off. Pretty solid price. Um, they have a pretty decent selection of knives. They have a really cool sale section. I mean, it's not just like discontinued random stuff. They have some, you know, pretty decent steals on things like the Rike Hummingbird. If you're interested in that, they got that for like a hundred bucks. Unless you want the gray one, um, that one's currently $1 million. Um, a bit of a Reddit story behind that if you want to check that out. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this knife here. It is very, very, very interesting. And um, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look. First thing I'm just going to be the size comparison. Let's go ahead and move this down here. And the first thing I'm going to compare it to is actually the CRKT Pilar. So these knives, in you know, lengthwise are pretty similar. Actually, this is a, a fairly small knife, even though it might not quite look at it first. It's pretty tiny. So we'll take the Pilar and the Feist and we'll line them up and. I'm going to be honest with you, the ergonomics on the Pilar are much, much better. But you're you're not getting nearly as much blade length. Um, if you just want to compare pure blade length, you're getting probably almost an extra inch. Maybe three-fourths of an inch with the Feist. And the handle length comes out to just a little bit shorter on the, uh, the Pilar there. While we're comparing smaller knives, go ahead and bring out the Spyderco Dragonfly here. I compared these two in my review of the Dragonfly, but you can see here also it's just a really, really, really good size. Um, again, you're gaining a lot more of the blade length. You're getting uh, quite a bit thinner carry um, as far as like actually in the pocket when it comes to width. It's just the, the Dragonfly, I should probably do it the other way. <laughs> the Dragonfly is much, much wider. Um, especially because of that blade hump. And to be honest, overall thickness really isn't all that different either. It really comes down to preference. Um, next up, let's go ahead and compare it to another front flipper. This one is much cheaper, but also has you know much different materials. This is the Real Steel G5 Metamorph. This knife compared to this knife is quite different. Um, this has a 2.75 inch blade. This knife has a three and a half inch blade. Overall handle width is pretty similar. Um, this knife is a little bit thicker, obviously quite a bit longer, and um, it weighs a bit more. Not not too terribly much, but yeah. So th those are pretty comparable. Um, the Metamorph just has a little bit more length to it. Last thing I'll compare the Feist to, just to give you a bit more um, comparison to a more standard knife. Here it is next to the ZT 0450 CF. You can see 0450 CF is a little bit larger. Not a ton, but a little bit, um, both in handle and blade. And it's a little bit, I wanna say it's a little bit thinner. It feels that way almost. Let's look. Yep, just, just a tad bit thinner. Not very much at all. So size-wise, knife's in pretty good territory. On to what I like about it. Very first thing is the design. I absolutely love how minimal this is. It's just, you know, kind of contoured titanium. That's it. Very, very simple blade design. Really nice shape. Um, the crown of the blade is, or the spine is crowned. <laughs> the crown of the blade. No, the spine of the blade is crowned. It makes it very, very, very nice for um, choking up, especially if you want to come up here and kind of do detail work using the tip or something like that. Really, really nice for that. Overall, though, the design is super classy, I think. it kind of, It's kind of a blank slate, so if you want to do anodizing, you know, it, this is a great option. If you want to do anod if you want to anodize the scales one color and then do the backspacer and clip a different color, I think that would look pretty cool. But the design leaves a lot of options. It's very classy looking. It's not really going to attract any attention. You know, it's small, it's plain, and I really, really like that about this knife. Going back to the blade for a minute, again, I really, really like the shape. 
Um, it's kind of this mix of like a almost a sheep's foot and a spear point kind of blade. Um, it does come to a tip, but the swedge kind of comes down to meet it. A little bit of belly towards the tip. I really, really like it a lot. The grind on it's super, super high. It's um, a flat grind. I'm pretty certain, yeah, it's a flat grind. Um, I don't think you really need a hollow grind with this thin as its blade stock is. It's it's going to cut pretty well, and it does cut pretty well. Um, I've used this on and off for a couple weeks now, and I really, really like how it performs, honestly. The materials on this are nice as well. Again, you have titanium, um, uh, titanium scale, titanium clip, titanium backspacer, and the blade steel on this is um, S35VN. You can see right there. Which is nice. The fit and finish is excellent. There are no gaps or anything that shouldn't be there. It's it's very smooth. It was all finished properly. The blade looks nice. The handles look nice. Out of the box, I was very very impressed with this, and I really really like it a lot. The action on it is great. Um, you can do a slower kind of open if you'd like to do that. But one of the reasons you're probably getting a front, a front flipper is for most people to try it out. So what you do is you want to catch your thumb on that little bit of uh, kind of a tail coming off the blade. And just flick it over. Just like that. And it pops right out. Action's really, really good. It pulls reliably. Um, I have had a couple slips, but that's usually more me than anything else. Um, once you get used to it, super easy to do. You can do it that way. You can do it that way. You know, some people like to come at it this way. I don't get the appeal of this way, but I think you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can do that. But yeah, for the most part, you're just going to be deploying it with your thumb, um, whether that be a, a quick open or slow open. And it's, it's really useful for both if you don't want to attract a lot of attention, which if you're carrying something this small and this minimal, is probably the case. You know, you just want something that will get the job done. This is a fantastic option. The size and weight are really, really good. It doesn't weigh very much at all. Again, it's titanium. Now, there's no milling inside. You can kind of see that there. There are no pockets or anything. It's just plain titanium. But it's fairly thin. And it's, like I said, it's pretty much all titanium in the handles except for the hardware. So you get overall a very lightweight package. It sits in the pocket very, very nice. The blade length is good, it's under three inches. The handle's a good size. You, you, if you really, really try, at least for me, I can get a four-finger grip on it. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get a grip on, but it works. Um, and it, it, you know, fills my hand just enough. But it sits very, very well in the pocket because of that thinness, and because of how narrow it is, and this tiny, tiny little clip. I love this clip. Let me, um compare it, for example, to the clip on the ZT-0450CF it is much, much smaller, much less obtrusive. Um, it's it's kind of like a shorter titanium version of the clip on the uh, Metamorph. It's, but in my opinion, it looks better. But you're, you're also paying a lot more. But yeah, it's, um, it's got some pretty good ramp. It, it doesn't it looks like it sticks out a lot on this knife as far as ergonomics go, but I really don't notice it too much. Um, it is the corners are rounded, chamfered rather, and it, it just sits in the hand very, very well. I one of my favorite things about this knife, honestly, is this clip. It's got the right amount of spring tension to it. Um, it's very easy to slip over jeans pockets or anything like that. It's not too tight, despite being how small it is, and it it just looks very, very, very minimal, like the rest of this knife. I just, I really like what they did with the clip here. I think they could have very easily screwed it up, but they didn't. It came out really, really well. The last thing in the like section is going to be the packaging. I'm not going to go over it here. There's a lot to it, but you can go check out the unboxing video of this, and you can kind of see it comes with a very, very nice knife pouch and a very nice box and all that stuff. And um, it just gives you an option to carry on some more knives, including this one. If you don't have a knife pouch, you kind of get that tossed in which is just nice of Kaiser to do. All right, on to the neutral. First thing up is going to be the pivot screw. Um, this is Kaiser's kind of signature, you know, this swirly pivot screw. I'm not a big fan of it. I think it detracts from this particular design quite a bit. I think the uh, more basic torque screws down here 
look a lot better. And then you get up here, and I think this is just, some people will look at it and go, oh yeah, I like that. You know, that's a little pop of design. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I don't have anything against the design itself. I just think on this particular knife, it doesn't really fit. And it kind of detracts from the overall look, in my opinion. Next thing up is the lock bar. So the lock bar tension is really, really good. I commented on that in my unboxing video. Very nice. It's not too difficult to get over. It's not too easy to get over. Very good lock bar tension. The problem is there really isn't a deep enough cutout for me to get my thumb into this. You can see there is a little bit of a, if I can get this to focus, a little bit of a cutout there for your thumb and a little bit of one on that side as well, but it's just not, maybe it's because of you know the size of my fingers, but it's just difficult to get in there. Um, if I happen to close it this way with my pointer finger, it's a lot easier to get in there and close it, but it's just not, it's not ideal for me. I wish they had made that just a little bit larger, maybe another, you know, half a millimeter, millimeter, something like that, just a little bit more of a cutout, just to make it a little bit easier. It's just difficult for, for me, in my opinion. Um, I figured I'd comment on it. It's not my favorite thing, closing this knife. And while I'm talking about closing this knife, the action really isn't drop shut. You can kind of coax it shut, but the blade's so light, it's not really going to fall. Last thing in neutral is the price on this guy. So as I commented, Indiana Knives has this for 150 which in my opinion is a much, much better price than the 168 they normally charge. At 150 it'd probably go in the like section um, or be close to it. It's a, just a much more acceptable price. I think at 168 it's... It's not that this is bad for that price, but it's facing a lot of competition, and probably the biggest rider on that is going to be ZT. Um, this knife has a much better action, in my opinion. It's much smoother. You get you can get an all titanium version for, you know, a little bit cheaper than that, or you can get this titanium carbon fiber for around the same price. It's a more traditional flipper, you get a little bit more blade, you get a much better warranty. I'm just going to go and throw that out there. You get the same blade steel. And uh, overall, if I had to pick one, I'm going to pick this one, just personally. But this is still a really compelling choice, but at that price, it's it's in some pretty hotly contested territory. Right there in that $150 to $200 range, there's a lot of stuff, especially coming out. Even Kaiser has a lot of competition up against this knife. So you have to really, really like this design, this approach to knife, or kind of knife design, that something that has to speak to you about this knife in order for you to say, oh yeah, my, my, one, my $150 is going to go towards that knife, instead of a ZT, you know, instead of something from Wii, instead of something from Spyderco, it's going to go here. Granted, I think this is a better value in this price range than a lot of Spyderco's, but I'm not going to incite a riot. Um, let's go ahead and go on to the dislike. Only two things here. Both um, kind of small, kind of big, depending on what you think of them. Um, number one is the warranty. The warranty is okay. The biggest thing that pisses me off is that it's voided by disassembly. So you, if you disassemble this knife, if you take it down to oil it up, that's it. Your knife is no longer covered under warranty, which is ridiculous. It's, it's just ridiculous, in my opinion. That shouldn't be a thing, and yet it is. It's just kind of frustrating. Um, a knife is a tool, whether it's really classy like this, or whether it's something, you know, a, a bit more usury, like the uh, Pilar. This is just, it's frustrating that I can take down the Pilar, and it's still covered under warranty, and I can't take apart this knife that is like seven times the price, eight times the price. I can't take down this one but I can take down that one. What's the difference? This is more expensive. They should be more um, more supportive of their products, more willing to accept that you know stuff's going to happen. I think the biggest worry with companies like these is someone's going to take it apart and can't put it back together. But to be honest, it's three screws. The only thing you have to put in is the blade, the wash, or the blade, the um, ball bearings, and the backspacer. It's super simple construction. But I'm not allowed to take it down. That really just pisses me off. Last thing is this knife, this one in particular at least, can't be disassembled. 
Um, it is a free spinning pivot. I I did try. I can't do it. I do have two Torx drivers. Try on both sides. Can't do it. It just it it won't budge at all. And that's applying a decent bit of force. These are pretty deep um, torque screws, which is nice. So I didn't strip them, but it. I tried very hard, couldn't get it done. So even if you're willing to void that warranty, um, you may be able to get yours undone. Or if you apply a little bit of heat to the screw, you can loosen up that thread locker a little bit. But it's not going to be easy. You're going to be fighting this one literally the whole time. On to the conclusion. So overall, what I think of this knife, I really like this knife a lot. I really, really like this knife. I don't have anything um, quite in this blade range. I have stuff that's a little bit shorter, a little bit longer. I don't have anything right around here. It's very, very slim in the pocket, which is one of the biggest things for me, is that a knife be you know, fairly narrow or fairly thin, preferably both. This, this is both. I like it a lot, honestly. Carrying it, using it, um, it's, it's pleasant. It's very, very, very pleasant. And I really don't have any issues with it, you know, for the largest part. For light use, light carry, this is a great option. I like it a lot. I like, you know, the design of it. I like the function of it. And overall, I think it's a really, really compelling knife, especially if you're looking for a bit more of a classy carry, something a bit more understated. This is a really, really good option. It's going to be legal in a lot of areas, and it's not ridiculously overpriced. Especially if you get it from Indiana Knives. But yeah, go check them out. Um, again, big thank you to Eric for helping me out on getting my hands on this one. Um, I'll leave a link to that shop down in the description. The Kaiser Feist is currently sold out. But if you email him, he may be able to give you an ETA on one. They'll have some more in. Or maybe hold one for you. But um, don't forget to subscribe. Check out my Patreon, all that stuff. And thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all have a good day.